Hello everyone, welcome to Kemedaya's farm, the day to you power and hope you are doing great. So on today's video, I'm going to be sharing an experience we have with you all. It was a huge lesson for us and uh, I know it's going to help a lot of farmers, especially um, uh, if you are just starting new farmers or if you are considering going into boiler chicken farming and all of that. So, this video is for you. If you are thinking of going into um, bed and you want to do boilers, this video is for you. Stick to it. So, welcome back. So, we're talking about beds, which is a boiler chicken. Uh, we made a huge loss. We lost over, we lost, we lost around 400,000 in our first set of beds we did. You know, it's our, it's our first time we're doing bed. We've been in this space for some time now and our focus has been on figuring. You know, so we decided to test run our bed sessions since we're building uh, a huge capacity. We decided to just test with just little to see how the market is, to understand the market and all of that. And we stocked some numbers of beds, uh, over around 250 beds. We stocked around 250 beds in the farm. And we decided to read it. Our initial plan was to do six ways to these beds. And um, we started looking for the market. And then uh, when there were four ways, we got some people that came around to these malas to see them. And uh, they were pricing the beds for 3,000 euro. So we were pricing to five and all. And we felt like, okay, if these beds are four weeks old and they have been priced for this amount, then that, at that time, these beds were weighing. Uh, around 2 kg, so 2 kg, I mean, like that. I think around 2 kg, 2.5 and all. So that's okay. If these beds at this age, they are pricing them for 2.5, 3,000. So that means when they are 6 weeks or even 8 weeks, you will sell them for more. You know, so maybe that is where you will now make more profit. We refuse to so sell. So we didn't sell. You know, so we no, told we them sell. to come in 2 weeks time. You know that in two weeks time they should come back through two weeks time we'll start selling that we're not ready to sell now and we spent more money in feeding these animals and all and when they came two weeks time they were pricing saying to in fact they were not even pricing it for two five that was how we say we can't sell at four weeks we refused to sell three thousand it's now when the bed is six weeks we refuse to sell those beds we decide to sell uh, sell this base ourselves, so we started dressing to sell and all of that. We're trying to test the different markets, you know. So we started dressing and all. Now, dressing to sell was good for us because we're not losing, we we're able to sell the bed the exact amount we want to sell them. Selling directly to the consumers, we we're able to make our money like the way we want to sell them, the little profit we just want to put on them. It was good for us. The mistake we made was what we decided to dress because we felt like let's see how we can make the process of delivering easy for us. So we dressed about um, 100 beds, decided to dress 100 beds so that we can store them you know, in time so that once the order comes, the delivery is easy for us to do. That was the greatest mistake we made, though we never knew. So we dressed these 100 beds and we started doing deliveries from there, you know, we're taking, when order comes in, we just go to a deliver. Now this was the mistake we made. After preparing these 100 beds, because normally I'm someone that just stock things in the freezer, right? I stock meat, I keep goats and all those things, I, I stock meat in the freezer, so I'm used to stocking meat in the freezer in the zip bag. You know, like I would load the freezer to the brain. So what we did, because of that idea, I didn't know it was different storing these chickens. So after we dress the 100 beds, we pack them immediately. If you see a video, I don't know if I can put this video. You see that there is water. The water that, water that was dropping, there is still water in the chicken, right? I just felt like the water will see out. So what I said to do, I said to cut a space so that that water can see out. You know, and then I package them. You know, I didn't know that I'm supposed to allow them to dry up. So after packaging them, <laughs> I took them and 
two empty tanks, store them in the freezer, like two deep freezers. We store them and then we run gym all through Saturday to like Sunday. Sunday night, the gym was on. This thing would not block. We put the fridge, it was really somehow. And I was like, what is going on here? Why is this thing not blocked? Why is it just cold? After running gen for over 24 hours, this thing is still not blocked. And it's smelling somehow. Hey, Wahala. Immediately, I have to, you know, start reaching out to people like, what can I do? My chicken is having a smell. Where's the best way to store them? Because I wanted to know what I did it do right and why it was not getting blocked. And towards it, there was no Nepal light. So, you know how much a little of is 600. You know what it means to run a gen, a big gen, you know, like for over 24 hours now, going to 48 hours. So, that was when I learned. So, in this life, you see, we learn every day. You know, and it's, that is a learn from other people's mistake Because if you are watching this right now and you're a bad starting um, beds, you know, you want to go into boiler chicken and you're thinking of dressing them and you don't know how to go about the storage, thank God you are watching this video. Because I wish I have watched a video like this before. I don't think I would have made this mistake I have made that have cost me close to 400,000 right now. Like I have lost over 400,000 right now, you know. So what we did, so I have to ask questions and also I realize that I've made a mistake in my storage system. You know, I was told that once I pack out the chicken, I will see that all the water that was in the chicken, everything I've saved, and that is why this thing refused to block. That the only way it can block is when this water, water is out. And the mistake I made, I would have allowed this thing to dry up before packing them. So once at the when you blend, they were already turning brown because we put in the kidney, uh, the gizzard, and the gizzard and liver and legs. We talk, we're talking them in, you know, with uh, talking in the stomach. So some of them were already turning green. Some of them we threw them away. That we see that it was already turning green. It's not looking fresh. So we just throw them away, you know. So this man was already there. We made a lot of mistakes. If we were cleaning them, what we would have done? Would have used vinegar so that that blood smell would, would go away. At that time, we didn't have that idea. We didn't even know. We just decided to just clean the cell, we can clean the blood out. But the blood smell was already smelling on the meat. But the meat is still good. But the blood is already smelling. You understand? So that was how we packaged them and we took them to. Now, after storing them in this uh, machine, you know, the next day they were already like getting blood and all. But that smell was still there. Smell was still there, and even this machine is still not the best. I would not advise the use of this machine, as even if they were already very dry, no water before you package them. Fine, you can use this machine. If not, the best thing I just think is just to pray for cold room for like if it's even three days, just put it there for three days, remove them out of it, put them to you, put them in the normal phase that they can just get blood very well. I think that is the best. Even this means I would not advise you to use that blood machine. That was what we use. But I would advise you to use this because it's also a waste of time and a waste of money as well. You know, so we put them in this machine and then after do a day for over a month. And it just look as if the cells just got stuck. Everybody was not going for life. Was not going for life, but life, but life, but life. You know, because we we're dressing and we we're dressing more to hard while we we're selling, we we're dressing more to hard while we we're selling. You know, we we're just topping it and home. And at the end of the day, we left with about uh, almost 70 beds in that place, you know. And the sense just for like straight to three weeks, the sense just dropped onto us coming in. And we were paying for that space. We were wasting money, but no sense was coming in. And, you know, the few people that came because the meat is not looking fresh anymore because of that smell. So the ones that are a bit okay, we have sold them. Those are that ones, the meat is okay, but that smell, nobody wants to buy it. Because of that blood smell that is already on it, and some of the part of the blood that is already showing like green because of the blood, this is less than 48 hours that this thing happened to this place like this. So, because of that, it's not everybody that can buy it. If you would say, it's not everybody that can buy it anymore because of the condition of the meat. There was one we delivered, the meat was okay because one of them was having that smell. They refused to take it. We have to go and take it back. Yeah, that's customer service. We took it back and we delivered live bed to them. 
you know. So we took it back and the meat was good. We sold the meat to someone else. The only one that was having that skin, after we washed it, the smell was off. Even without using vinegar. Yeah, if your meat has a smell, you wash it, you put use vinegar to put vinegar in the water you're going to use to wash it, the smell will disappear. The meat was very good. But just because of that smell, rejected they rejected the whole meat. You know. So that was it. We, we put the, this meat right there. There's no way we could sell them because of the condition of the meat. The meat is okay because of that smell. And everyone is saying no, 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 no. And we didn't have choice. What are we going to do? We are paying for the storage. We're wasting money paying for the storage. What do we do? And you know this market too. Well, and they know we didn't market. have choice. And you know market people, they can As I was saying, um, we didn't have uh, any choice because we are paying for the space and uh, the meat, the condition of the meat now we can't even sell them to the people who are supposed to sell them to which is the consumers so we're left with the market women because these are Buki uh, Buki now that mean these malas they don't buy the ones that are already dressed these life ones they use to buy the which they can buy is rubbish we didn't have choice and you know market women beds beds that we refuse to sell for three thousand, for even four thousand. We started selling these beds for two thousand. Why? 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 Why did we sell them for two thousand? Because of the conditions of the beds. Because of that smell they have. The meat is still good. It's just that smell. Most of the meat is still good, but the smell. Was that we lost close to four hundred thousand? Really, really sad. I mean, really, really sad. It's not something you know, as a business owner, it's not, it's not something you, it's not an experience to have. You know, we just felt like okay, instead of losing everything, it's as good as losing them because the money for the storage alone and everything is <laughs> the money we use in selling the bed. So even the money we use in taking care of the bed up to like the eight was it's gone. We didn't get anything. It's gone. It was a good business for us. Sell it to the end user was so good. The challenge was this one we dressed and the storage, the way we stored them. So I'm advising you if you are thinking of starting um, beds, you want to do boiler chicken, and you want, and you want to sell, sell yourself. It's good when you sell to the end users and also it's good when you dress them and sell hmm? but please once you dress them you take them to the cold room it's the best just keep them for like one week and then move them to your freezer that is the best way to store then another way that is if you have to dress them do it that way if you have to dress them, do it that way. But if you know you don't have to dress them, that there's a way out. You can still be selling and feeding. Please, our advice you just leave your bed. Because one, people would think the best were sick. That was why you decided to call them and dress them. They don't know that they are heavy beds. You understand? So the best way, once the other come, dress and sell. Once the other come, dress and sell. Once the other come, dress and sell. So it's just have a day that you just be doing delivery. So let's say delivery is every Saturday. So when you make your order, you get your order by the weekend. That is when all the guests will be dressed and delivered. That is the best. Don't dress and go and store in the fridge. But if you have to store the bottom because don't continue to feed, just make sure that once you finish dressing them, I like the water to see before you package them and take them straight to the cold room. That is best so that they are fresh. When they are fresh, you can still sell them very, very well. But once they have any small comma, I'm sorry, you will not be able to say. So that was how we lost uh, that amount of money. It's really sad. Like, I was so pain. Like, it's so painful. So painful. When everything is going well, I'm not so just little mistake have cost you a lot of money. But we have learned our lesson, right? Next time, doing beds, we're definitely not going to be making any mistake anymore. That we're going to lose a such an amount of money. And I believe as well that this has also helped you as well that next time you, will, you won't also make this mistake that we have made as well. So thank you.
If you are yet to subscribe to the channel, please kindly subscribe and comment that yes, fam. Also follow us on TikTok, follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. We have a lot to share. Do you want to say that this video was not impactful? I believe it was because now you know how to store your chickens, uh, big boiler chicken, any of the beds you are doing. Now you know how to store them. Now you know what you must do, you know. For you not to make loss, you must make sure that they're in good condition if you are to dress them. Okay, if you are dressing them to sell, the best way to store, put them in a cold room immediately. Allow them to see back what I eat before you bag them and take them straight to the cold room. You can leave them in that place for some days and then you take them to your normal freezer. That is the best way to store your dress when you're chicken so that they can be made fresh and good and be able to sell them at the exact price you want to sell them even though like i said that is why you don't have church because some people will also think that the bed had issue that was why you dressed them <laughs> you know it's not easy you know but uh, that is what you do so it's really painful that we lost just because of that one mistake you know not knowing that uh, the freezer even generator power cannot it can't do anything in the body of this uh, bed I, I never knew i never knew i wish it was even never like any you know and uh, normal electricity power it would have been even better they were like ah we are using generator for freezer with full beds like this what do you expect it can't do anything in their body I'm like okay I've learned my lesson, so I believe now you have learned your lessons as well. So please kindly subscribe. We have more to share, more lessons to share. You know, it was uh, the past month of doing this bit, a lot of experience and a lot to share. So thank you. Yeah.